Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be checking out the JJRC H30 little nano quadcopter unboxing, inspection, setup, a flight test, and a pros and cons all in one. As with all my reviews, I will have the links to this guy down in the description of the video, so you can check and click that link if you want to see more in-depth specs and pricing on this little guy. But as you can see, I do have two of them. So I have two H30s. I'm going to be giving away one of them, so stay tuned for that little giveaway. Subscribe if you haven't already to uh, make sure you are on the bandwagon with the giveaways. But anyway, without further ado, let's just go ahead and start uh, reviewing this little guy. And first of all, we're going to go ahead and unbox it. Let's see what it's all about. Okay, cool. So that's everything in the box. Our instruction manual and there's here's the quad here. So it looks like this is a red quadcopter. I'm not sure if there's any different colors, but what a nice looking candy apple red, man. Wow. I haven't seen one with this candy apple for a while. There we go. We have the power switch on the bottom battery compartment here in the back. Let's go ahead and open this up. And it looks like we are actually getting a little removable battery in here. So let's pull this out and see what this is. It's looking like a 150 milliamp hour 20C 3.7 volt, volt little battery. So really tiny little battery in there, but at least you can have the option to, um, you know, get extra batteries and replace them and continue flying. You can see the camera in the front and then there's a SD card slot on the side. So looks like there's not an SD card slot in the box. I don't see one in the package here. So it looks like you are gonna have to use your own SD card. But pretty neat looking thing. Looks like it little, has little eyes here on the front. There's the camera again. And as far as the prop guards go, it looks like you can't take these off. If you wanted to take them off, you are gonna have to cut them off to remove them. So if you're a beginner, leave them on until you get really good take them off. You'll get a little more flight time and a little bit better handling if you take these off. But don't cut them off right away if you're a beginner. Just leave them on. Let's see, they give us an extra set of propellers and there is a little USB charger in the bag. Getting to the remote control. Here it is. So it's just a little black and red remote control. Very similar to all the other little nano controllers out there. We've got our throttle, yaw, pitch, and our roll for all of our flying inputs. These guys here, all these are our trimming for this pitch and roll. This is gonna be your flipping function and recording function. So I think you press and hold it, it'll record and stop recording the video. And then just hitting one time, you'll do your flips. And then your left trigger here is gonna be your different rates of flight and taking snapshots. So one of, them's, one of them's gonna be holding it and one of them's gonna be just clicking once. And then these guys here, these guys, the thumbsticks, they also have functions when you push them in like this, you can hear the clicking. If you click in the left thumbstick, it's saying it will do a headless mode. And then if you click in the right thumbstick, it should, should try to do like a return to launch. So we'll be all testing that out in just a second. Looks like you will need a screwdriver on this one to go ahead and take off the back of the battery compartment here. Hopefully you don't need to put this screw back in. Let's see how this one does with its um, ability to just hold it in. So two AA batteries actually, and it looks like this one is going to go ahead and click in nice and tight. Okay guys, so let me go ahead and charge this stuff up, slap some batteries in here, and see how this little H30 does around the house. And then we'll do a pros and cons. Cool, let's go fly. Okay guys, so let's see how this little JJRC Nano does in the house. Um, didn't give us a micro SD card, so I got this one laying around. Hopefully this works. But I'm just going to go ahead and pop it in. You need to have the contacts facing up. And let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see how it does in the house. And then we'll go ahead and do an outside flight, check the range and stuff. So plugging in. This one looks like it's a little bit tight, you know, for the, the cables and stuff. You can shove them kind of above the battery. And then go ahead and close that battery door. It's nice because it has a switch here. So we'll go ahead and turn on the switch. We see the lights blinking. Turn on the controller. Keeps beeping until we go up and down and then we're bound up. So we can see that it doesn't have altitude hold because it's just a manual throttle here. There's no throttle spring. 
And let's see what this thing can do. So to record, this one does have a camera on the front. There we go. So holding in the right trigger starts the recording on the camera. And pressing and holding in the right trigger stops the recording. You can see how the light turned red and was blinking. We hear a long tone when we press and hold the recording. Let's go ahead and lift off. And here we go. So I do have the prop guards on. Remember, if you did want to remove these after you get a little better, you're going to have to cut these off. It will fly a little more stable and longer without the prop guards. I'm noticing it's, you know, wandering a bit and it's a little bit fluttery with these prop guards on. So, you know, a little bit weird. We'll see how the video is. You might be able to see that flutter in the video. But regardless, this is what we got. Let's go ahead and do a punch test while we still have a full battery. So hover to punch. Pretty slow, but once it gets some momentum, it does speed up pretty quick. Let's see what the yaw's like. So this one, gosh, this one does feel like it has a little bit of a delayed yaw. You see how I'm pressing left and then right. And kind of like how the JJRC X1 had that delayed yaw. I don't really, really like that. That's too bad. So something they could probably work on there. <clears throat> Anyway, full yaw to the right, and it does wander quite a bit, kind of in like a little whirlpool. Here's the pitch and roll, forward and back. I believe this is rate one. Whoop, that was return to home. <laughs> so I just clicked in the right thumbstick, and you see how where it thinks its, its home is. It's to the back left. Cancel that out, press the right thumbstick again. So unfortunately, it's a little skewed already. It's going that way. So I wouldn't really trust any kind of return to home or headless with these toy quads. Uh, left thumbstick. What's that doing? Okay, that's headless. So you're pressing the left thumbstick and it's already skewed. So if I push forward, it's going to the right forward and if I push back, it's going to the back that way. So wouldn't recommend using headless on this one either. So that was return to home and headless. Let's see what else we got going here. So this one has really faint beeps. So the left top trigger is gonna be your rates of flight. So that was rate one is what I was in initially. Rate two, let me let you hear those beeps if you can in the mic. Hear those two beeps, so this is rate two. So we get quite a bit more pitch and roll. And our yaw, this may be a little bit faster. And then rate three, click that left trigger again and there's three beeps and we have way more pitch and roll so really quick little fast flyer with this one you can get up some good speed and let's see what our rate is of yaw in this one rate three wow so it starts off slow and it stops very slow but it does get going quick look at this it's spinning quite like a top press and hold you saw how it get started getting going slow and then once it's fast uh, it's pretty stable so pretty interesting, you know, kind of neat how it goes super quick. Already seeing some blinking lights here. And that looks like it may be our battery. Yeah, I'm holding full throttle up. And this thing looks like it's just getting ready to land here. What I'm going to do is um, quickly stop the video. If I can remember what that was, I think it was holding the right trigger yeah so the lights now green I just want to fly I wanted to stop the video just in case I cut the battery and it wouldn't save the video but I want to fly it just to see um, what happens well I guess that's it it's not gonna let me launch again so apparently it does have some kind of low voltage cutoff to prevent you from destroying the battery so let's go ahead and take this thing out to the park I'm gonna charge the battery again we'll do a quick little park flight we'll test the 
range on it and we'll try to do some flips in the park and see how that does. All right guys, so we're at the park now. Got to see the bun box, the house flight, and now we're in the park. And since we went through most of the functions in the house, pretty much all I'm gonna do here is do a quick little range test, see how far you can go. And also just kind of fly around kind of sporty and see if it can handle a little bit of wind. It's blowing about five miles per hour from this direction, blowing that way. And let's just see how this thing performs. Launching, rate two here. Take a pick. Oh, that was a flip. All right, so what did I do? Okay, this thing, I now I remember, it has two, does it have two sides of the button? <laughs> I've already forgot what the buttons do, guys. Sorry about that. All right, three. Well, I'll just start recording video. Okay, rate two, let's go do a range test. Hopefully the video is recording. Okay, so here we go, flying out. And there's our range. That was it, oh my gosh. Okay, so 50 feet and you're gonna lose range with this one. Even when I held up the controller, it wouldn't rebind. That's unfortunate. Pretty limited range with this little guy. May have even been a little less than 50 feet. Still recording the video. So I'll be having that, you know, pop up on the screen from time to time so you can see what that video is all about and the quality. Anyway, let's go ahead and try again. Are we rebound? Yes, we are. So at least when it comes back in range, it rebinds automatically. So very limited range on this one. Like I said, 50 feet or less here. And let's just fly around. With this one, if I can remember, rate three was a little bit... Oh, see, we're already... Wow. Oh my gosh, okay, so throttle's stuck high. And now it's dropping. There we go. So that was not good, you see that? So it kept the throttle, I was, I was accelerating with the throttle, and it kept it maxed out when it lost connection. So you could get a flyaway with this one. And it seemed like maybe a few seconds until it started to slowly drop. So not so good on the range and what happens with this one when it loses connection so far. All right, so just grabbed it and walking back to the launch site. Um, you can see it did rebind itself though. So I don't know, with this one, you know, We'll just, for the remainder of the flight, we'll just keep it really close to us and do some sport flying around and hopefully it doesn't lose connection. All right, cool, so relaunching. I wanna make sure I'm in rate three because of the wind. And let's just fly really close to our home base here. Kind of fast, ooh, okay. So that's what this thing does in rate three. It's a really fast delayed yaw. I forgot about that. So, Unless you want to do these kind of spins like this, remember that? Uh, don't go into rate three. Stay in rate one or two. Because it's really hard to control the yaw. Let's go ahead and try a la hand launch. Here we go. All right. So this is rate two. Whoops, that was my bad. I let off the throttle too much. Okay. Get it together and just fly. It actually does seem like the throttle drops off pretty quick right at the end. Are we still recording? Let's take a look. Yep, still seeing a red blink in there, so we should still be recording video. So the wind is kind of influencing this one pretty bad because of the propellers um, guards. You see those guards there. And you can cut those off. Get better, go ahead and cut those things off. I just left them on because I didn't want to cut them off in case I wanted to give this thing away or something. Oh no. Is this having a leveling issue? Like some of the other ones? Oh, it might have a level issue. So what was happening was I was flying into the wind, pushing forward, and it started to level itself out. 
some of these little minis nanos have that problem and it looks like this one might so let's see I'm holding full stick forward it's yeah it's eventually going forward let's try again yeah it is working looks like occasionally it has like that level out issue when you're flying but it seems to be doing okay now sorry about that sun it's a little late in the evening there see it's having a leveling issue so I'm pitching full pitch forward maybe it's just the wind I don't know but look at that it will not come back to me I've had this problem with a lot of nanos maybe they use the same kind of board or something but I'm having to chase it and it's pitched full pitch forward and it's not getting that pitch it needs you know this is rate two let's see if we go to rate three hope oh, that was a flip <laughs> let's see if we go to rate three and this while we're pushing forward yeah okay that got, that got it kind of fixed it I think a little bit maybe not maybe it just has issues with wind I think I think that was the battery guys kind of was full throttle up and the battery kind of just killed it I think let me see if we're still recording that's yeah, still recording we'll go ahead and stop that camera recording just so it doesn't corrupt the file and that's a good you know tip there is to always try to stop your camera before you completely run out of power just to be safe yeah we're out of power so I'll have that flight time up on the screen pop up here if you wanted to see the total flight time we'll go ahead and compile the airtime on there I want to turn this thing off as soon as possible just so I don't entirely kill the battery. Let's go through a little bit of pros and cons. So, pretty bad range. Uh, 50 feet or less. And the problem with this one is, is if, if you are up on the control throttle stick, it will hold that throttle once it loses range and you will possibly have a flyaway. It did seem after one, two, three, maybe four or five seconds, it then started to slowly drop. So if you're in close proximity in your neighborhood, you may have a problem with it flying and dropping into somebody else's yard. So keep it close to you with this one. And you can be the judge of how good the video was. I haven't seen that yet, but I'll have had it up on the screen, like I said. Anyway, it's kind of fun. It seemed like it had a little bit of a leveling out issue where it couldn't really fight the wind. But again, that could just be from the props, uh, guards. You can cut those off if you need to. But for what it was, that is the review for this one. And I hope you enjoyed it and it was knowledgeable for you and I'll see you in the next video don't forget I'll have this link for this one down in the description so you can check out the pricing and more in-depth specs on this by clicking on that link and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching